before I begin, I just want to point out, I'm going to be referring to some things that sounds like a personal uh, thought or something. Pastor Mueller wrote this sermon, so those are his thoughts, not mine. I want the credit to go to the right place. So, I just want everybody to know that. Okay. Grace, peace, and mercy from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, please follow along the words of the epistle reading from Romans in our insert today. Yours is in the English Standard Version, and I'm going to read the New International Version. So we'll start. Now to him who is able to establish you by my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery hidden for long ages past, but now revealed and made known through the prophetic writings by the command of the eternal God, so that all nations might believe and obey him. To the only wise God be glory forever through Jesus Christ, amen. Did you notice the difference in the first line where ESV says, him who is able to strengthen you, the NIV says, him who is able to establish you. I don't know about you, but to me the word establish always seems to carry the idea of beginning of something. You might use the word established when speaking about the founding of a city or an institution or a business. Around Fulton you might read established in 1851 about Westminster College or established in 1847 regarding Fulton State Hospital. I used to think the main meaning for the word established was to begin something. But in the Webster's Dictionary, you have to read the second meaning and the fourth meaning to find that sort of idea. Meaning two, to, insti to institute prema premature, uh, permanently in an enactment or an agreement. Meaning four, to bring into existence. Does anyone, anyone know or want to guess what the first meaning of the word establishes. The first meaning for the word establish is to make firm or stable. Stable being the root word of establish. The word comes to us from Middle English back through Middle French and before that back to Latin, stabilis. A similar meaning is listed fifth, to set on a firm basis or to into a, into a favorable position. <clears throat> the word in today's reading in Greek means to confirm, to establish, to strengthen. Today's reading is the end of Paul's letter to the congregation in Rome. Like most of his letters, it ends with a doxology, a prayer of thanks to God. If you want to follow along, I'm working through Paul's reasons to praise in a backward sequence from the end of the reading toward the beginning. Paul praises God because of Jesus Christ. Paul praises God because he is the only wise God. Paul praises God because the mystery that has been hidden was now revealed. The mystery was God's plan of salvation for the whole world, for Jews and Gentiles alike. The mystery has now been revealed through the life and death and resurrection of Jesus, and through the ongoing telling of that gospel to the world. world. Paul praises God because that had been proclaimed to these believers in Rome, and because God is able to establish, to make firm, to strengthen the faith of the believers through that very same gospel of Jesus Christ. In today's old Testament reading from 2 Samuel, we see God's promise that he will establish a house, not a building, but a dynasty, for David that would endure forever. David was already king, so we know God is not promising that David will become king. This establishment is not about being a kingly line. God promises to establish, to make firm, a family line that would ensure a king from David's family forever. In today's gospel, 
in the words of the angel to Mary, we see God's promise coming to fulfillment. The baby is to be born to Mary, would, would have the throne of David, and he would reign over the house of Jacob forever, a never-ending kingdom. This establishing of David's house or dynasty is not about a beginning, but about an eternal, ongoing, stable kingdom. In today's epistle reading, we see part of the ongoing fulfillment of this promise. The gospel of Jesus Christ has been proclaimed to these people in Rome. They had become believers in Christ. They are now part of the kingdom ruled by the eternal son of David. The gospel was being spread so the people from all nations would believe and be made firm in the kingdom of Jesus Christ. What we are doing today, here and now, is part of that ongoing fulfillment of God's establishing his people. His kingdom, by his holy word, by his holy sacraments, God establishes you as his people. He doesn't just do his work or bring you to faith. His work is ongoing. As we talked about last week, he is continually sanctifying us, making us holy and keeping us holy through Jesus and the work of the Holy Spirit. God's work is ongoing to keep you in faith, to keep your faith stable and strengthened so that you are ready for all the highs and lows you face in life. His word is filled with promises of his love and forgiveness to make you firm. His Holy Supper is filled with Christ's own body and blood in assurance of forgiveness of sins to strengthen you. His words of holy absolution announced after our confession of sins proclaims his forgiveness to establish you. The mutual consolation of the brethren, the support and encouragement of fellow Christians keeps us mindful of his love and forgiveness to establish us. In the beginning of Genesis, out of nothing God created all the material of the universe. From the chaos of all that material, God created an orderly world. When sin entered and brought death and decay, God gave the promise of salvation, the promise that established faith. Not just making a be beginning of faith, but continuing to make faith firm and strong day by day. As we once again come to celebrate of Christ's birth, we need to keep this in mind. God's gift is not a one-day event, but an ongoing gift that impacts us every day of our life. There is a prayer in our previous hymn, the Lutheran worship, that used to make me ask that good Lutheran question, what does this mean? The prayer is in the Holy Communion portion of the service. It asks God to send the Holy Spirit into our hearts that he may establish in us a living faith. I used to wonder why we constantly needed to have the Spirit establish living faith in us. It sounded like our faith died again and again and again. If that was true, we were consistently in danger of dying without faith, still in our sins under the curse of damnation. I thought this must not be the meaning of the prayer, but I always wondered why it was worded this way. I don't remember when the light finally drawed on, drawn on me, but either another pastor explained it or I took out the dictionary. Finally, it made sense. The word established has more to do with something ongoing than the mere, merely the beginning of something. It is about being strengthened, made firm, stabilized, if you will. And Paul makes it clear that God is able to establish you, strengthen you, build up your faith by the gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ. And if you like to a play on words, God stabilizes you by his gift in a stable. Please join me in reading that prayer. A prayer that the Holy Spirit will make your faith strong. It's in the sheet that I passed out in italic print. 
Blessed are you, Lord, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on us children of men and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. We give you thanks for the redemption you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Send your Holy Spirit into our hearts that he may establish in us a living faith and prepare us joyfully to remember our Redeemer and receive him who comes to us in his body and blood. Amen. Amen.